What's up everyone, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts and another video on the Cushcraft, oh look at that, Cushcraft 13B2 2 meter broadband boomer. I wanted something, I wanted to do some VHF 2 meter sideband, some great distances. You know, uh, if you're not familiar or you're a newly licensed tech or you just haven't done it, VHF sideband, you could work states away. That's right, states away. Uh, I'm sure somebody's done DX across the pond, maybe, I don't know, but this is not just an antenna that you would use for a repeater five miles away. You can use it FM, but the gain on this thing, this is a 13 element, two meter antenna, and, and I asked Richard, I said, Richard, what's the highest, Richard at MFJ, I said, what's the highest uh, gain VHF sideband antenna that you have and he recommended this one. He said this one is by far one of the best choices the Cushcraft um, So uh, what I'm gonna do is make this another video just like I did the high gain and the cobweb We'll put it together see what I can do and maybe a part well I'll, I'll put this together in part one and try to get it mounted part two I'll do some testing now the only thing I have to to do uh, VHF sideband at the time is a FT817 QRP radio now that does five watts, and five watts on this, yes, you can work some long distance contacts um, with, with gain and a good day of propagation. Two meter propagation isn't always there, but it does uh, happen. And, um, but I do have a Mirage 160 watt amp. It's a 50 watt drive, 50 in, 160 out, but with five watts, I should get 25, 30 watts out of it. So, um, We'll, we'll make part two and show some contacts all fired up and, and get it up there. Um, but it does come with, you know, the manual here. And it doesn't seem too bad to, that's what it looks like. And you can polarize it vertically or horizontally, depending on if you're using it for sideband or CW, you know, FM. Uh, and it doesn't look as intense as the high gain to put together. The box is rather light. All the aluminum is light. Uh, all the parts are here. So... I recommend laying out the parts first in the manual. It's got a master parts list. Uh, you want to lay them out, make sure you got everything. And um, we'll put this together and check it out. And it says uh, wideband, so this thing will do 144 to 148, um, probably with minimal tuning, if you even have to tune it. It tune it. It does have a. Uh, there's a matching network here. All right, so um, let's get to it. The manual shows that you can stack these things. You can stack them two side by side, vertically or horizontally, up top and bottom, or even four of them. Probably use that for moon bounce or EME moon bounce or whatever, but man, the gain you'd have stacking four of these things, wow. Boom is assembled. For those wondering, the boom is 15 feet. 15 feet, and I measured that with my antenna tape. All right, so I got the T-match on here, matching network, and without going into something so uh, complex or technical, so the T-match straps here connect the matching network to the driven element, and there is a spacing that's critical between this bolt and the inside of this strap, which it tells you in the manual is four and a half inches. So you, these straps here, you know, there's a theory behind matching networks with delta match and gamma match and T match and stuff. I I don't I know I, I, I understand how they operate. I'm not gonna I'm gonna leave that to the professionals because you can get into a theory on how these things work and <clears throat> I'm not confident to do all that. But I, however, I do know that this is your matching network which matches the um, driven element to the frequency of the 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 Yagi. So. Uh, those are very important that the straps are in the right places and um, that the SO239, the feed point, faces the inside of the antenna. Um, and it seems like everything I'm putting together has lock washers and all these little bolts here. So the lock washers, stainless, keep those things tight. Now for assembling the radiators or the elements onto the boom. 
Now, I will stress again, as I did in several other videos, when you're working with these guys, please use appropriate eye protection because when you get this thing and you're starting to put it together and you got these things sticking up, all it takes is for you to turn around and stick your eye. And take it from a person that has a uh, previous eye experience, um, you don't want to lose an eye. It wasn't from an antenna, but I stress it very heavily in each one of my videos that I play with these things. Now, grouping the elements together, as with any Yagi, the reflector goes on the back. Then you have the driven element. Sometimes you have two reflectors, but they go progressively shorter as you get down to the end. So it's safe to say the reflector is the longest element and the director on the very end is the shortest. So what you'll do, now that you have the bigger driven element mounted, you can put these things on the ground and kind of see which ones are the longest? I can tell right now these two are my reflectors. Okay, so I'll start with those. And it shows you in the book the length of each element. So you want to, you know, put the longest ones for the reflector and taper down one at a time. After each one of these you mount, they'll be shorter and shorter. And it tells you right in here the table length right here. All right, so if you want, you can measure them. If you have your, I keep pushing this. <laughs> if you haven't seen a video on the antenna tape by Radio Waves, check it out, available at Gigaparts. Um, but uh, you can measure each one and put it together. So let's get that done. All right, 13 elements on here so far. All the way down to the end. Now, one thing I did notice, uh, A, I have two extra radiators or uh, radiating elements. Not a problem. I have an extra for a spare. But what I did notice is everything was perfect on measurement up until this one right here, number 10. Was a little, everything from number 10 that way, they were all, the lengths were off. So what I did was I measured and made it because these are supposed to be from. Uh, elements 8 to 13, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So from this one here, uh, supposed to be 34 and 5 eighths. Here was 34, 5 eighths, but this one from here that way was a little long. So I cut them, uh, I, I nipped the ends off, and it didn't say anything in the manual about that, uh, but all the lengths all the way down are, are perfect to the manual. So I just nipped off like a quarter inch on one and a half inch on the other and got it, you know, so that the the last uh, five or six elements that are supposed to be the same length are. Um, so basically on a Yagi, your directivity or your, your fr uh, forward gain or front to back ratio will be based on the spacing between the elements and the element length all the way down the Yagi. So if I'm pretty much what the manual says, um, I should be good and and the good thing about this because I've made several VHF UHF Yaggies the good thing about this is all the elements have those holes in the middle so there is no spacing and measuring up and down you don't have to worry about centering this element and because the boom is drilled you don't have to worry about measuring the spacing they already did that I made a 12 element one time and it was a process because I had to you know measure in between each one I also made a cubicle quad one time out of PVC and some scrap wire, and that worked pretty good, but I had too much, not enough front uh, forward gain. I had almost just enough, just as much on the back side of the beam as I did in the front. So this one should be pretty directional. Uh, and I also mounted the mount here. I have it set up for horizontal. Um, and all you'd really do is loosen the bolts and, and move this to make it vertical. But right now the mast will go in here and this thing will be set up for horizontal for sideband. Will it work for a, a, a FM repeater vertical? Sure, I mean, you're not gonna be polarized perfect, but I plan on leaving this horizontal and being able to use it on some repeaters that are 15, 20 miles from me. It'll work just fine. Um, it, you won't have to go up there and turn it to do a net one night. Uh, now, if you're talking about trying to hit a repeater 300 miles away, um, it can be done, but uh, you wanna, make sure that it's horizontal if you're on FM and sideband you want it I'm sorry vertical for FM and horizontal for sideband but I plan on really not using it much on repeaters but if I want to I don't have to go up there and turn it you know 
The manual does say for the connector assembly here that it's fitted with an end connector. Mine is an SO239. Um, I prefer that. Now, if you wanted to use an end for lower loss, you can do that. Uh, and they also even give you the boot, the boot for to slide over the end connector and some grease, um, silicone grease for you know weatherproofing on that connector. I do have the rubber boots on here. Um, you really only you get them for the end for the boom, and you get them for the T match and the driven element. The rest there is none. And again, guys, please watch your eyes. Uh, so lastly what I'll do is I'm going to mount this up on a mast and keep in mind uh, if if you're using coax um, or you're, you're going to use coax but if you want low loss you're going to want good coax now I have several different kinds of coax I have a roll of times microwave I forget what it is not even it's better than 9913 I forget what it is but I'm going to be using the Messi and Poloni coax that I picked up at Hamfest, at Dayton Hamvention. Um, check out my video on that. That is some superior coax, and what better to use that with for lower loss at higher frequencies, uh, the Messi and Poloni coax uh, that I'll be feeding this with. And we'll do some, uh, I'm gonna get it up on the mast real quick, and then we'll do an uh, SWR test on the analyzer and see what it's looking like. But overall, um, this is the antenna. It is, I'm about two hours into it, so it only took about two hours with some music, probably longer if you don't have music, to get this together. Um, pretty lightweight. I mean, the whole beam is very light. Can be set up on a mast. Uh, looking, looking like uh, it's gonna be a performer. If you want the uh, hose clamps here, where they fit in, I don't know if I mentioned this on my high gain video, where these boom connectors fit in, you might want to put some dielectric grease or, or some kind of grease to keep that from seizing if you decide to take this down and regularly maintain it because that'll that'll uh, fuse together there with the, I think the two different kinds of metal. So you want to, uh, maybe not two different kinds of metal, but the connection there to make it easier in the future if you want to take this thing down and take it apart. Um, so let's go, at, oh, and one more thing, look at this. I got extra parts. I have left, I have my uh, nuts and bolts for the U-bolts um, for the mast, but I have extra parts, so that is good. Usually extra parts are not good, but if you lose a washer or a nut or two, you have some extras here. So, uh, and again, also a couple extra rods. If you decide to have to trim or you bend one, you got an extra one, you don't have to replace it. So props to uh, Chris Craft for including extra parts to keep this thing in service for a long time in case you uh, lose a couple or I uh, need to replace some, you have them. All right, so temporarily I have this thing set up on the MFJ tripod out in the front front yard here. It's about seven or eight feet up in the air. I'm gonna test it real quick um, with a length of coax. If you come here a second, I'll show you on the, on the uh, analyzer, okay, what the SWR is. Now, with me standing right next to it, it might be just a tad off, but I want you to see this. 145.13 is one to one, almost center of the band. If I scroll up here to 147, 1 1.0 to one SWR. Um, if I go down to the sideband portion, 144.2, it's 1 1.3 to one, very acceptable. I could ever so slightly adjust that T-match to get it even better here, but it also might be because I'm standing right next to it and I'm not that high off the ground with a short piece of coax. Once I get it up on the mast 20 feet in the air, I might retest and see how flat it is. But across the entire VHF band plan spectrum here, it is 1.1 to 1.0 to 1.2. So very acceptable, that's with me not tuning anything. Uh, and just for the heck of it, if I go to UHF, let's go up to FM 445.2, 1.1. It will work on UHF. Was it designed for UHF? I don't think so, but it is a acceptable SWR to use it. Performance wouldn't be guaranteed at that kind of uh, setup. The element spacing would change and so would the element length. But you can use it in a pinch or every day for VHF or UHF on some repeaters. Uh, even on UHF sideband down here to 430 something, it's still 1.6, 1.7. It may be lower up in the air. So 
a great antenna. Part two is coming. Watch part two. We'll put this on air and test it. And thanks for watching part one of the Cushcraft 13B2. Subscribe. Check the links for more details in the description. And 7.3 from KJ4YZI.